Hey everybody, Cold on here with another Vox Immortalis commentary guide. Uh, this is for Heroic Ascendant Council in Bastion of Twilight, and this is Ten Man. So the heroic version of this fight ends up being one of the most challenging of this tier, and in terms of total wipes to get our first kill, I would say it's not really the hardest. We've had more wipes, but certainly it would be the hardest to repeat. Uh, in a farm sort of sense. Um, this fight took a little over 100 attempts to actually get down and it doesn't really feel like there's a lot that you can do to simplify it. Um, we went through a lot of different strategies and iterations and settled on what you see in this video but because the second phase of the fight can be so problematic and requires just such great uh, personal responsibility for everyone in the raid. There are just simply a lot of aspects that are difficult to control and repeat easily. So it will be very frustrating. Uh, that said, the first phase of the fight is fairly simple once you get used to the new mechanics and how to control it. Um, there is no berserk timer to speak of on this fight. So the real challenge is just control and survival. Uh, because if you lose anybody that you can't battle res, you cannot win just because of the DPS check at the end. Unless you're amazing and you're using fewer healers or tanks or something. So for the first uh, phase, there's two new debuffs that go out. They're cast on random raid members. One is Static Overload and one is Gravity Core. And when these get cast, they have an unlimited duration on that player. And they'll hit anyone within about 10 yards of that person. Static Overload gives everyone a small nature dot, and Gravity Core uh, increases uh, the cast time of people that are afflicted. Once the Static Overload and Gravity Core targets uh, actually stand next to each other, which you can see we do in sort of the center of the room, then both buffs are canceled out, and players can go back to their positions. Uh, other than that, things are pretty much the same in Phase 1. So make sure you burn them both down below 25% at the same time. Phase 2 is the entirety of the challenging part of this fight. And the reason for this is uh, all the normal mechanics apply, but in addition there's a new mechanic, uh, which is a frozen orb. You can see it spawning to the left of me right there. Uh, so this orb will chase a random play player. The tank is not a valid target but everyone else can be chased. And if it's allowed to reach melee range with that player, it will explode and deal about 200,000 damage to the raid. So basically it'll, it'll wipe everyone. Um, the problem is that since the orb chooses to take the shortest path possible at all moments, the only way to get rid of it is to have it walk through one of the flame strike areas on the ground, which is another ability in heroic. The flame strike, uh, unfortunately, is delayed uh, for about five seconds uh, to actually show, and then another five seconds to actually form after the orb has spawned. So this means that you have to buy yourself time when you're kiting the orb to actually be available uh, to walk it through a flame patch. And this right here is the main issue with this phase uh, because the controlling of those orbs and getting them into the fire can be very difficult. Uh, any movement uh, boosting effects you have are going to be critical and it's really important to communicate to help people out. So like uh, sometimes if someone can't boost themselves in time or they have to swing all the way around to get enough flame patch they'll ask for an additional uh, sprint from a druid, uh, something like that. But if you have the, uh, I think it's a Holy Priest talent that increases movement speed, that'll be a huge benefit for this fight. Uh, other than that, the, oh, I should mention the flame patches kind of uh, are can be controlled. They spawn under a random raid member's location. So this was a key... Uh, thing that one of our paladins discovered uh, from reviewing some of our footage and really shaped the way that our strategy evolved in this phase. So 
normally we would do this kind of like you would see most people do this fight where you're just all individually running around the room uh, getting the buffs in, or the debuffs that you need to avoid the AE effects, you know, running away from lightning rod, all that good stuff. Um, but it was so chaotic and people would be coming in at different angles for all the debuffs and the orbs would always be in different spots. The fire patches would always be in random areas that what we realized is if we could control somewhat where the fire lands, then it doesn't matter who it targets. Uh, we'll know basically where it's going to be. So we kind of were trying to keep the raid uh, group together near the bosses for the most part. So basically we will wait for an orb to spawn and then move the raid um, to the opposite side of the room. So basically the furthest distance we can f from that. Uh, this isn't always the case because sometimes we want to stay stationary and uh, get more DPS time. So it sort of evolved into if we're near an outside edge and uh, we can just stay there, we'll just keep the bosses stationary and, and allow our DPS to burn them a little bit. But if we're in it at uh, the center and the orb spawns too close to us, then we all try to move together in the same location. And that forces the fire patch to one particular area. So other than those things, uh, like I said, you just have the basic debuffs mechanics um, the quake and thundershock are both survivable if and only if um, you manage to interrupt hardened skin for terrestra that does buff the quake damage so if you don't interrupt that then non cooldown uh, classes won't survive but uh, really the, like I said phase two is the challenge of this fight and so if you can work out a, a reasonable strategy on that and get people to survive. It doesn't matter how long that phase takes. So as I mentioned, phase three is just a burn phase. Um, we are using one tank and three healers, uh, but some people would opt for two tanks and two healers, uh, whatever works for you. And our basic phase three strategy, as you can see, is our tank pulls uh, the monstrosity out of the center immediately, so no one attacks right away. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have like a misdirect effect in the raid, but this makes that center puddle uh, as small as possible. And then this allows our three healers to sort of form a triangle around the center. And then the rest of the range can be outside of that um, spread out at least 10 yards so that we don't chain any effects to each other. And this is very beneficial for DPS purposes. Uh, as well as healing. You should also delay Bloodlust a little bit. Uh, it will be tendency to use it right away, but because of the length of this phase, you actually want to delay it a few seconds so that you're getting it when the damage is, is the greatest, and thus your healers can benefit the most. So, anyway, we're basically just chaining cooldowns, tranquilities, when things get really crazy at this point, and uh, trying to survive long enough. And yeah, it's an insane fight, but it felt good to finally get that down just before the patch. So there's Twi Twilight Council. Good luck and thanks for watching.